Hi everyone. Uh, in the previous lectures, we discussed about transfer functions and frequency response. And we also discussed that transfer functions have certain points in the S-plane where the transfer function actually blows up to infinity. And we call those points as poles. And similarly, we also said that the transfer functions also go vanish to zero at certain points in the S-plane and those points we call those as zeros. Now the question we will be trying to answer in this lecture is that are there certain inputs for which the system is going to offer me an infinite gain because transfer function actually blows up to infinity at some point. So are there some inputs which will exercise the transfer functions at those points of the singularity. So those inputs we will call them as the singular inputs. Similarly, are there certain inputs which will exercise the transfer function at the point of a zero. So those inputs, we will call them as zero forcing input. So simply, what, what do I mean by this is, if I apply a zero forcing input to the system, then the system should give me a zero output. Similarly, if I feed a singular input to an LTA system, then the output the, or the system should offer me an infinite gain for that uh, particular input. Now, very briefly, we had discussed intuitively in the previous lectures that if you had a pole on the j omega axis, then we said the transfer function is going to blow up if I fed a sinusoid of frequency equal to the pole. But now, what if the pole is a real pole? So shown here uh, is the frequency response of a simple first order low pass filter. So given by this transfer function. Okay. So once you encounter the pole, the transfer function is going to roll off at the rate of 20 decibels per ticket. Even though we call omega p as a pole here, uh, if I feed a sinusoid of frequency omega p, obviously the system is not going to give me an infinite gain because we can clearly see that the frequency response is finite at omega p. So then what are those inputs for which the system can at least theoretically offer an infinite gain? So that's what we'll be studying in this lecture. So first we'll consider a case of exponential inputs. So first I'm going to feed an input of this type e power s naught of t to a linear time invariant system with a transfer function h of s and an impulse response h of t. h of t is nothing but the inverse Laplace transform of h of s. The output of this system we discussed in the previous lecture as well is simply the input which is e power s naught of t times h of s naught where h of s naught is nothing but the transfer function evaluated at s equal to s naught. So I'll just very quickly go over a proof of this result. So uh, we can prove this in time domain. So your input is e power s naught of t convolved with uh, the impulse response h of t. So if I expand the convolution integral, that will be h of tau into x of t minus tau, where x is your input here. So that will be e power s naught of t minus tau. So I'll take e power s naught t common outside because t is a constant in this integral, tau is the variable. So you'll be left with this term. So integral of h of tau e power minus s naught tau d tau. Now this is nothing but your Laplace transform of h of tau at s equal to s naught. So this is a very interesting result. It tells you that your output is simply input multiplied by the transfer function evaluated at s equal to s naught. So now what we will do is that we will feed an input of type e power sp naught t, sp of t, where s naught equals sp and sp happens to be a pole for the system. So then the output is simply going to be e power sp of t times h of sp, which is uh, the transfer function evaluated at the pole and we know that h of sp is infinity. So then the system is actually offering an infinite gain. Similarly, if I feed an input of this type e power sz of t to an LTA system where sz happens to be the zero of the system, then the output will be e power sz into h of sz which is nothing but zero. Okay. So if I feed an exponential input to the system, then the output is simply the exponential input times the Laplace transform evaluated at the exponent of the exponential, where sp here is the exponent of that exponential. Okay. So now we'll answer our questions. What if the pole happens to be a real pole? So if your s0 is equal to plus minus omega p, it's a real pole, then the input for which the transfer function is going to offer you an infinite gain will simply be an exponential, a real exponential of this type e power plus minus omega pt. Okay, it's, it can either be a growing or a decaying exponential. So if you fed an input of this type, the system is going to offer you an infinite gain. Similarly, what if the poles 
S0 of t were purely imaginary. In that case, the input for which the transfer function is going to blow up to infinity will be a complex exponential of this type e power plus minus j omega naught t. Again, uh, I can take a linear combination of this complex exponential, uh, the inputs, singular inputs. So, it'll, let's say I take an input of this type, e power plus j omega naught t plus e power minus j omega naught t by 2. Then that will be cos omega naught t. So, which means this system, that, that is a sinusoid, a real sinusoid. So, this system is going to offer, I mean, uh, Laplace, I mean, a system with a pole at plus, j, plus minus j omega naught t, uh, j plus minus j omega naught, is going to offer an infinite gain for a sinusoid at uh, a sinusoid of frequency omega naught. Now, this should, this should sound very intuitive. This is something we already discussed in the last lecture, that if you actually have a pole on the j omega axis, then if you feed a sinusoid, you can expect the system to offer an infinite gain. What we have seen in this lecture or learnt in this lecture is that, if, what if there was a real pole? Okay, which means there is no singularity on the j omega axis. In that case, the output, this is the input for which the transfer function will offer an infinite gain will be an exponential input, a real exponential. So, in that case, I'll take an example. So, a very simple example, uh, with, this is a first order system, a first order low pass filter with a single pole at minus omega p. So, the input for which the output is going to go to infinity will be of this type, e power minus omega p t. In fact, how does it go to infinity? You can just directly apply a convolution integral once and show that the value of the convolution, the integral blows up to infinity for all time. Okay, it's a very trivial proof. I'll leave it up to you. You can solve it yourself. Okay, uh, just show it using a convolution integral. You can see that. So mind you, your input is not multiplied by u of t. It's just this itself, e power minus omega pt as it is, is the input. Now, similarly, I'll consider an example where uh, you have a 0 at s equal to minus omega z. In that case, what is the input? The input should be of this type for which your output will be 0, which is e power minus omega z t. Now, this I can easily prove it in time domain itself, how you get a 0 output. What I, all I need to do is just find the inverse Laplace transform for this, which is the impulse response for this system. If a system has a unit gain, the impulse response will be an impulse itself. So, if you convolve a signal with an impulse, you get the signal back. So, if a system has a unit gain, then the impulse response in time domain will simply be delta of t, okay, plus s by omega z. Now, the inverse Laplace transform of s is nothing but delta dash of t, which is a derivative of an impulse, okay. And that comes from a very simple uh, property of a Laplace transform, that is, if x of t has a Laplace transform of x of s, then dx by the derivative of x of t will have a Laplace transform of s into x of s. So, using that, we can very easily show that this is S has a Laplace transform, of an inverse Laplace transform of delta dash of t. So, to this system, I am going to feed an input of this type, e power minus omega z t. So, the first term is as it is, the input will come out as it is from the first term. The second term will be a derivative term. So, you will have 1 by omega z into the derivative of the input. So, that will exactly turn out to be 0. Okay. So, you, you could actually see that if I fed an exponential input, I am getting a zero output. So, here I have shown, uh, I haven't discussed about zeros in the previous lecture, so I have just uh, shown the S plane, uh, I mean the transfer function as a function of S in the S plane. Okay. So, first, the first case is when you have a zero at S equal to zero. These are all real zeros, S equal to zero. Okay. Uh, these are all real zeros and uh, we have a zero at S equal to zero. So now if you see this point here, there is a zero on the frequency axis, on the j omega axis itself. So this is a two-dimensional graph where I'm plotting the frequency response mod of h of j omega, which is simply omega itself. Okay. You have a zero at omega equal to zero. So which means if I fed a sinusoid of zero frequency to this system, so an input frequency of this type, e power j omega naught t, where omega naught is zero, you will get one. Okay. If I had a sinusoid of zero frequency or in this case a constant DC signal, the output should be zero. And that should make sense because this is a simple derivative system. So, the, inv the, the impulse response for the system will simply be delta dash of t. It will be a derivative of the input. So, if it is a constant input, the derivative of that will be zero. So, in the same way, I have shown here the left of plane zero and the right of plane zero. Again, you can see the frequency response looks the same for both. The magnitude response will look the same for both. Okay, but the phase response will look different. So again, 
the zero forcing input for this system is going to be e power minus 80 and for this system it's going right of plane pole system is going to be e power plus 80 okay so i'll uh, take a few more examples so one is a complex pole or a purely imaginary pole so this system is a we, as we discussed in the last lecture is a resonance system with a complex pole of this type e power plus minus i mean sorry complex pole of this type plus minus j omega naught then the inputs for which the system is going to offer you an infinite gain will be of this type x of t is a e power plus minus j omega naught t here or a linear combination of these inputs you know so that is i have taken a a e power plus j omega naught plus a e power minus j omega naught by 2 if let's say i don't have i don't have a j here then i'll get a real sinusoid which is cos omega naught a cos omega naught t if i put a minus sign here and add j here and I, i'll get sin omega naught t so for all these inputs which is sinusoidal inputs real or complex sinusoids this system is going to offer me an infinite gain okay and that should make sense because as we uh, see here in this uh, graph we can see that the pole exists on the j omega axis itself so which means the system should offer you an infinite gain if you feed a sinusoid to it at the at the frequency where the sinusoid the sinusoid's frequency should be equal to the location of the pole okay so similarly i have uh, shown another example wherein you have a zero a, a purely imaginary zero which means the zero is on the j omega axis itself okay the zero actually lies on the j omega axis itself again for that you will actually have sinusoidal input for which the output will be zero so that that should sound intuitive because if your zero is on the free uh, on the frequency axis or on the j omega axis then if you feed a sinusoid of frequency omega naught which also happens to be the zero of the system then you will get a zero output okay so what did we learn new in this lecture is that if there was a real zero then you need to feed a real exponential to get a zero output so that is something uh, that we we uh, we discuss in this lecture which is new which we haven't discussed before okay um, in the next lecture uh, what i'll do is that i'll try to add a little bit more practical considerations into the system that is i'll assume the system to be causal here i've assumed inputs to be everlasting i mean inputs to exist at t less than 0 as well okay i'll put some conditions on the input and and some conditions on the practical conditions on the system as well and see what will be the exact expressions uh, when we feed singular and zero forcing inputs uh, to lta systems